Well, look, let's get you some more on this story. France 24's uh, Armin Georgian joins me here in this studio. Armin, that was a uh, press conference given by Michelle Bachelet a little earlier today. What are the takeaways uh, for you? Well, she said that uh, it was unsupervised, but she admitted that being in a, a bubble, a, a sort of loop uh, because of COVID ostensibly did uh, dictate the terms of where she could go and who she could see. So that doesn't really answer the question that human rights organisations had about uh, was COVID being used as an excuse to deny her access to certain witnesses. Uh, overall, the impression I had was that she was really treading on eggshells in her answers about human rights in Xinjiang. And there was a very revealing contrast for me between the way she talked about human rights there and uh, the way she talked about uh, racial uh, equality and justice in the United States. She said that her office, the UN High uh, Commission for Human Rights, had presented a report about justice and policing in the US after the killing of George Floyd. And the way she talked about that report uh, was very candid. And it, to me, there was a big contrast between that and how she talked about human rights in Xinjiang, which is actually ironic because the UN, uh, her office has a report that it's been working on about human rights in Xinjiang. And according to human rights groups, her office has sat on that report while it presented a report on policing in the US and uh, racial issues in the US, but it has not presented a report on uh, the situation in Xinjiang. And of course, human rights groups said the reason it hasn't done that, the reason it hasn't presented this report is because her office was worried about the reaction in Beijing and that perhaps her invitation to visit China would even be uh, cancelled if she did publish that report. All right, so clearly a, a delicate issue to, to, to broach there for Bashley. Uh, you made some reference, Armin, to police files. Uh, what exactly are they and, and why are they so important at this stage? Well, w one thing that really upped the pressure on Michelle Bachelet at the start of the visit was the publication of the Xinjiang uh, police files, which is a trove of hacked documents. They were obtained uh, uh, by hackers who got into the service of the public servers of the Public Security Bureau, or PS be in two districts of Xinjiang. Uh, this is an article we're showing you, uh, which is written by our own journalist, Sebastian Seipt, uh, who spoke to the key figure in this leak, uh, who is a German academic called Adrian Sense, and he uh, obtained several thousand computer files that contain the records of 20,000 Uyghurs who were arrested. Th this trove was then published by a consortium of media. But this is a very interesting article in which our own journalist interviews this German academic, Adrian Sense. So if you want to know more about uh, what this actually is and, and the hack and what is contained in the police files, you can go uh, to France 24's website and look at that uh, article or indeed the Le Monde uh, uh, article about this issue, which was also part of the... Um, part of the consortium that published this uh, th this trove of, of data. Uh, the interesting thing here, uh, and this is what the German uh, academic tells our journalist in that article, is that according to Adrian Sands, uh, this is the most unfiltered information so far that has reached the outside world about what's actually happening in, in Xinjiang because it was hacked, therefore completely unsen uncensored and unfiltered. That contrasts with the previous uh, sort of trove of documents that came to light, which was the result of a leak that the New York Times got hold of in 2019. And this is uh, the New York Times from that thing. Absolutely no uh, mercy uh, it talks about the uh, repression in Xinjiang, but this uh, this leak contains more than 400 pages of internal Chinese documents. So because they were internal documents rather than straight up police reports or, uh, you know, hearings and police stations and so forth, these things would have been more redacted and more controlled. Uh, so it doesn't have quite the same unfiltered 
impact of the Xinjiang uh, police file. So in that okay. sense, there's been an interesting change in what is actually available and the way that the, the information was presented between 2019 and these latest police files. Okay, Armand Georgian, uh, France 24th, International Affairs Editor. Thank you. Thank you.